Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Daniel Moskart and I'm going to be doing a short presentation on data citations. As you know, the topic of the current and previous weeks is uh, occurrence data and my talk will therefore be on uh, focused on data citations for occurrence data. As you can see from uh, this side, uh, there's a big GBIF logo on there uh, and that's because I do work for the GBIF Secretariat and this also means that my talk will be very GBIF focused. But uh, I would argue that the principles that I'll be talking about can and should apply to other sources of occurrence data, as well as other types of data, uh, for that matter. Uh, I should say that uh, I apologize in advance for any strange sounds uh, during this, this um, presentation. I am working from home and recording this, so uh, yeah, just bear with me, please. Okay, so kick things off, let's start by looking at a, what a data citation is. Um, if you take a look at the Wikipedia definition, um, here it says a data citation is the provision of accurate, consistent, and standardized referencing for data sets, just as bibliographic citations are provided for other published sources like research articles or monographs. Typically, the well-established DUI approach is used with DUIs taking users to a website that contains the metadata on the data set and the data set itself. Okay, so that sounds familiar and simple, but the question is why should we be doing data citations in the first place? Well, I would say that when we rely on the work of other people and we want to make sure that they are, well, we want to make sure that they're accredited. And uh, data citations can give rise to bibliographic metrics and metrics can be a deciding factor in securing funding, uh, academic tenure, and so on. Um, and uh, a fairly recent concept in the world of uh, data uh, are the so-called FAIR principles. Um, this acronym and the principles behind it state that all data should be findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Um, and we think that this uh, fits perfectly with, uh, with the mission of GBIF. Um, as uh, we, through the aggregation of large volumes of data, all assigned globally unique and persistent uh, identifiers, DOIs, occurrence data is easy to find. It can be accessed from anywhere in the world by anyone with detailed community-defined machine possible metadata, all standardized, making it interoperable as well. And uh, in order to sustain data sharing and to recognize the value of data, the data is always also easy to cite. And again, the DUIs here are key to this as they are linked to the data and the metadata with a clear guidance as to how the data can be used and what licenses apply. So I would say that these are very good principles and indeed very much in line with uh, GPF's missions, mission of making biodiversity data available to well, openly and freely to anyone anywhere in the world. A lot of the work done for a data citation comes out of uh, uh, Force 11. And in uh, 2014, uh, the Force 11 community defined the first data citation principles, which you can see on the screen now. Uh, these principles state that data should be considered legitimate citable products of research, and basically with the same importance as other um, research outputs, such as uh, journal publications. And just like uh, bibliographic um, citations, data citations should facilitate giving credit and uh, they should be used whenever and wherever a claim relies upon data. Um, data citations should include persistent identifiers and uh, these identi identifiers should be unique, um, for instance, DOIs. Uh, data citations should facilitate access to the data and also the metadata, not only for humans, but also uh, for machines. Okay, so now let's take a look at occurrence data at GBIF. So as a researcher interested in doing uh, ecological niche modeling, you need occurrence data. And uh, GBIF is a pretty good, or at least very large, provider of, uh, of such. Um, I guess I should rephrase that because GBIF itself doesn't provide or publish any data but merely allows other institutions to publish through GBIF. Uh, this happens thanks to 
um, hard work of a large network of both national and uh, thematic nodes uh, and a ton of data publishers including museums, uh, herbaria, uh, other institutions with collections, research groups, citizen science projects and, and others. Uh, so currently we have about uh, 1500 uh, of, of, of such publishers providing access to more than 50,000 data sets with a combined total of more than 1.4 billion occurrence records. Uh, and last year, uh, people downloaded almost 40 billion records every month on average. Uh, these downloads have then been used in more than 4,000 peer-reviewed journal articles so far. So as a researcher needing occurrence data, you go to GBIF and of course the first thing you do before thinking about downloading data is reading the terms of use, right? Of course not. Anyway, uh, chances are that you've never seen it or perhaps even heard of it. And I guess that's, that's also fine. But uh, I would like to take this chance to just emphasize a couple of points about um, the, uh, the terms of use. Um, in GBIF, we like to say that data is free of cost, but not free of responsibilities. So when you download data from GBIF, um, also, as mentioned by uh, John Wachorek in his excellent overview of the uh, occurrence data sources, it's your responsibility to make sure that the data is fit for use, but it's also your responsibility that your use of the data follows the data user agreement. So that should be pretty clear, um, but uh, without going into details of, of the entire agreement, I would like to highlight a few important points um, shown on the screen here as well, uh, saying that as a user you have to publicly acknowledge follow, following the scientific convention of citing sources in conjunction with the use of data, the data publishers whose biodiversity data you've used and were appropriate through the use of DOIs applying to data sets and or data downloads. Um, if you if you want one take-home message from my talk, this is the, this is the one to stick with. Also, um, users must comply, comply with the terms and conditions included in the license selected by each data publisher. Um, this is, of course, also important to know that, that um, well, data uh, shared through GBIF is always open, meaning you can, you can always get to it, but you have to respect the, the licenses that have been selected by, by the data publishers. Okay, so with all that theoretical talk about data citations, let's have a look at an example. Let's say that I am a researcher and I am interested in marmosets in Brazil. I've got uh, my search ready here. Um, I've selected the taxon of interest. I'm only interested in records that have coordinates. And in this case, I've chosen Brazil as my area of interest. Um, and this looks fine on the map, uh, got sort of clearly defined uh, boundaries here. Um, I can take a look at the gallery just to see that we've got the right type of animal and looks, looks right to me. Um, and uh, so when I'm happy with the search I've got, um, I of course can go then to hit the download button. And uh, already here, here's an important thing for you to notice. Um, we are here showing the license um, of the data. And this is showing the most restrictive license of all the records you're about to download. And this, of course, means that you as a user has to respect this license. And in this case, being um, CC by NC, uh, meaning that you have to, first of all, make sure that it's only used for non-commercial purposes and that you provide um, or you uh, provide attribution to the, the provider of the data. Um, so we're going to go ahead and click uh, the Darwin Core Archive to download this data. Oh, and look at this now here. Here's a reminder for you, just again, telling you that uh, yes, data is free of cost, but not free of responsibilities. You're getting data from GPIF, it's free and open, but by downloading, you are agreeing to the user agreement, which also which means that if you're going to use the data, you have to remember to cite it. So this is just another reminder for you to do this because it's important. 
So we, we understand this now, so we're going to click Understood, and this kicks up the download. Um, so, so processing the, the data and putting together download can take anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours, depending on the complexity of the search. But already here, while the download is preparing, we've got the citation. And here's the DOI, and this is the important bit. Um, so you should grab that, hang on to it, save it to your reference manager or whatever you like to do to keep track of uh, you know, your sources and references. Um, it will also be emailed to you, um, and, uh, but should you, you lose it, you can always access um, records of all previous downloads um, by going to your uh, gbif.org account. Um, if you click here, I'm just going to go to my account here. And you can see here that under downloads, it's got all previous downloads that I've ever done. And I can, you know, go back to any one of them. Um, and here I've got a download from February, and here's the DOI that I, uh, that I need. Um, so that's really how simple it is. Um, do your download, check clean your data, do your analysis, modeling, whatever. Cite the data, publish the results. Wash, rinse, repeat. So you'll notice that in the, um, in the citation we are suggesting you use here, it doesn't really say anything about the publishers. Uh, it just says GBIF. Um, but if we, if we have a look at this particular download, there's only about or less than 1,000 records. But these records were pulled together from 25 data sets. Um, and this is, this is very often the case, um, and downloads of, of data from GBIF are usually based on um, you know, specific taxonomic or uh, geographical filters, and thereby they are often derived from hundreds and if not thousands of data sets from different publishers. So instead of trying to get that into a single citation, which obviously would be impossible, we make sure that the DOI uh, will permanently resolve to this page that you see here um, that describes the download in detail with all the filters. Um, you can see when it was done. And importantly, you can see all the data sets um, that contributed records and how many records were contributed by each of these data sets. Um, so attribution check. Uh, there's also um, a button here which of course you as the user or the person who requested this download will use to download it, but anyone who visits this page in the future will also be able to, to re-download the data, um, which is important of course for reproducibility. So once again, repeating the take-home message here, when you publish papers citing use of GBIF mediated data, we ask you to make sure that the citation includes a DOI. The beauty and uh, the idea and beauty of this being that such citations will, when properly structured, um, be deposited as, at, at deposited as part of the article metadata with Crossref, who assigns DOIs, DOIs to papers. This results in a machine readable link between the paper and the data uh, in what is referred to as event data, uh, which is a source uh, shared between data site and Crossref. Uh, events are defined as something that links one resource to another through a specific relation. Um, for example, uh, a paper with a Crossref DOI cites a GBIF download dataset with a data site DOI, and in this case, the Crossref metadata deposited by the journal would trigger such an event. Uh, links can, however, also be established the other way around, for, for instance, in the data site metadata. And this is useful because we sometimes know that a specific paper uses a specific data set, but it's not clear from the cross of metadata. And it doesn't matter if the paper claims to cite a data set or if the data set claims to have been cited by a paper. The result is the same. This is what an event looks like um, in the metadata. So we can consume these links um, to report usage of not only a specific download, but also to the underlying data sets that contributed to this download and the data publishers that made the data available through GBIF. This is not only important, uh, an important incentive for publishers, but also critical for, for helping to ensure funding for organizations 
in the GBIF network. So if you want more high quality occurrence data, you should make sure to cite it properly so that the publishing or institution can be credited and make sure that they receive additional funding. Uh, if you're interested in, in how uh, the tracking of these citation works in detail, um, we've got a page describing the system here. Um, and the, the automated approach involving DOIs and event data is uh, not exactly 100% reliable yet. Um, so so our, our way of tracking literature and citation is still very much manual. But if you remember to cite the DUI, you will be helping this to move in the right, right direction. So this was actually the, the most easy part of my talk. Um, and I'm going to switch the focus now a little bit. Uh, in previous talks, there's been a lot of focus on uh, different tools for doing modeling, including tools that automate the download of, of occurrence data. Um, and we are often asked, how should I cite data when I got it through uh, Dismo, Spark, RGBIF, or you know any other tool? Um, and so, so some of these tools make it easier for you, so you don't have to worry. But in the end, and this is very important, it is your responsibility to ensure that you are comp in compliance. It really doesn't matter how you get the data. We do work with some of these third-party developers to make sure that uh, you know, creating data citations is, is, is easier, but we really can't force anyone. And this is, of course, a result of wanting to make sure that access is as open as possible, but on the other hand, also um, wanting to ensure that, that you know, uh, credit is, is paid where credit is due. <clears throat> but, uh, so the bottom line is really here that if you aren't using the gbif.org download system, that I, I showed in the beginning, data citations won't be easy. And there are, of course, exceptions. And I will uh, mention RGBIF as one. Uh, so if you're using or planning to use RGBIF, there are a few things that uh, I think that are important to consider. So um, just briefly, RGBIF is an R package from um, our open science that allows you to uh, search and retrieve data from GBIF. Um, RGBIF wraps our code around the GBIF uh, API to allow you to talk to GBIF uh, and access metadata, species names, and occurrences. Uh, RGBIF has a range of different functions, but I want to highlight one in particular, and this is the awk download function. Um, it uses the same system as when you download data through GBIF.org, and this means that all requests are authenticated, log to your account, and issue a DOI for EC citation. So if in doubt, use awk download. RGBIF also provides access to the occurrence search API. And the search API is basically what you see um, feeding searches uh, on gbif.org. So this is all done synchronously, um, and there's no logging of the requests. So once you've done a search and you've obtained the data, you can't really be sure that you'll be able to reproduce it. You can easily obtain you know, 100,000 records for use in modeling, but you're also left with the task of doing the citation pretty much yourself. There's no DOI and there's no download landing page um, for, for, for reproducing this, uh, this data. Um, RGBIF does provide uh, a function uh, called uh, GBIF citation, uh, which will help you produce a citation for uh, one of the search-based queries. You should keep in mind, though, that such a citation might include up to you know, you know, thousands of data sets, and this will not be easy to fit into any reference list. So unless you know exactly what you're doing, chances are that these citations will not work out, and the result will be that you know, we won't be able to actually count them. And what about other tools? Um, and I want to emphasize that I am not trying to, to do any kind of shaming here. Um, just pointing out some things that you should be aware of. Um, I mentioned Dismo, um, but there are also others, and a lot of them are you know, great for doing modeling, including some that have been presented in previous talks. Um, and many of these tools rely on R packages that use the search API. So you end up with the same situation, having a lot of data, but no easy means of citing it. Um, and to be honest, some people just roll with it. 
um, you know, go, thanks for the free data, stupid. Do their analysis. Do a gen generic citation. Uh, like, you know, I got data from GBIF. And then, you know, publish their study and wait for others to cite it. And who doesn't get data, uh, credit? The data publishers. So what do you do? Obviously, I can't tell you exactly what you should do, but I want to give you some advice on how you can help improve data citations. Um, and uh, so in, in, order, in, in order of preference, I would say the first thing that you should consider is downloading occurrence data through gbif.org. This will ensure that you know, your request is locked, stamped, signed, and you've got a DOI ready for a citation. It doesn't get easier than that. If you need to use R um, to, to automate uh, the process, I would recommend using Auth Download um, because it has the same benefits as downloading from gbif.org. Now, if you need to use another package or another tool, make sure you understand the consequences and make sure you have a plan for citing the data. If this isn't possible, try option one or two. And as a last resort, if you don't want to use option one or two and you can't really come up with a good plan of citing the data, you can try to replicate the, the search that you've done um, as a download. So basically, get your data through your preferred package and then right away go to gbus.org, replicate that search and get a DOI for technically the same data. Uh, it's not perfect, but you know, it'll, it'll do the trick. Um, and while we're at it, just a few words of advice on getting, using, and citing our current data from GBIF. Um, first of all, make your searches as specific as possible. Don't download all birds if you're only interested in a single or a few taxa. Um, don't download global data if you're only interested in a specific country or region. Try to use as many filters as possible <clears throat> to narrow down your search before downloading. Um, this, will, this, this means that there will be less cleaning to do afterwards and there will be less diluting, if you will, of the, um, of the data cited. Because we really only want to cite the records that we end up using. But with that being said, we also recognize that there is no data that is immediately ready for analysis after download. And uh, you, know, you will need to do checking and cleaning. Um, but we believe that checking and cleaning is a very important part of the research process and choices made should be described in detail. <clears throat> um, as mentioned in a previous talk, uh, I think two weeks ago, checking and cleaning data you know, often takes many times longer than the actual modeling, but people are often very unspecific about the choices they make in the cleaning process but very specific about the choices they end up with in the, in the modeling process. So, so even though you may end up, end, end up discarding 50% of the data you've downloaded, it's still important to reference the original raw data and you know, be explicit about the choices you make during cleaning you know, for science. Before I end, I wanted to share some statistics on how GBIF mediated data is actually being cited. Um, and as you can see from um, the current slide, it's not great, but it is slowly improving. Um, but for every paper published that uses a generic citation, that's a slap in the face of the people who work hard to make this data available. And we need these people because they're the ones that can help us improve the quality of occurrence data. As John also mentioned in his talk um, from two weeks ago, we might have 1.4 billion occurrences available for download, but far from all are of high enough quality to use in modeling. So how, do, how can we get this, this number up? Um, for the species for which we have good records, in 50% we only have 20, less than 20 occurrences. What can we do? So if you ask me, um, one thing you can do is pretty easy. When you use GBIF mediated data, cite the DOI. To ensure that you get you give credit to the data publishers that can help so that can help them get funding for more digitization and data publication. That's it for me. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, make sure to submit your questions for Friday's uh, questions and answers session. And of course, finally, don't forget to cite the DOI. Thank you.